Last week, after a very short illness, my trusty iMac passed away. Despite all the efforts by medics, it wasn't to be. But that was then. This is now. So now I can show you how I did this. Okay, so first of all, let me just start this off with a huge thank you to a guy called John Carruthers. I posted on Twitter asking if anyone knew of any software that can create these photo mosaics, and he replied recommending something called Easy Moser. So no, I didn't create this manually, but in this video I want to show you how we can use Easy Moser to create things like this. This video is not sponsored. I'm not being paid in cash or product and Easy Mosa very likely have no idea who I am. I just think this is really cool, so I thought I'd share it with you. So here in Lightroom are all the photographs I want to use to create the photo mosaic, and they're all different. Some are portrait, some are landscape, and there's one or two square ones. Now when the photographs are used to create the mosaic, Easy Mosa crops them into a square one-to-one -one ratio. So you have a couple of choices. First one, crop all of your images. or do it in Easy Moser. That's what I'm doing because I'm not having to crop my images and then go back into Lightroom and undo that later on. Now you do have to pick your photographs wisely because if you have a picture that is say like this, where the people in it aren't very close together, with a one-to-one -one crop, they're not going to appear in the same photograph. So you could try using Content Aware Scale. Let me just delete this boundary box going around our image. And in the layers panel here, I'm gonna click on the padlock here to unlock this layer. I'll then go to the edit menu and choose content aware scale. Now in the options bar at the top of the screen, we have this little chain icon, meaning that if I adjust the width, the height will also change and vice versa. We don't want that to happen, so I'm gonna press down to turn that off. Further over on the right hand side, we have this little person icon, I'm definitely going to make sure that that is pressed down because then that will make sure as much as it can that when I change the scale of this picture, the people in it will remain the same. The environment is what will change. So now we have those settings in place, I can come over to the right hand side here, click on this little pointer and drag over to the left. Now obviously it has its limitations, but as I drag over you can see that the people are to the most degree remaining in the same proportions. But there is only so far I can go. So something like that would work perfectly for a one-to-one -one crop. However, this doesn't work on every image. If I just unlock the actual background here, then go to Edit, Content Aware Scale, making sure that the chain link is off and the person icon is ticked. If I drag this one over, you can see that it just isn't gonna work. For images like this, you could do as I did, and in Lightroom, right click and choose Virtual Copy to create a duplicate. Then in Easy Moza, we can crop each of the individual pictures so that each person still appears in the mosaic. So the next thing we need to do then is to export all of these photographs out of Lightroom so that we can import them into Easy Moza. So in Lightroom, I'm gonna hold down the Command key on Mac, Control key on Windows and press A to highlight all the photographs. Then I'll go to the File menu and choose Export. I'll then click on Burn Full Size JPEGs Preset, and I'm going to make sure that all these photographs go to a folder on my hard drive. And I'll choose that folder here by going to my external SSD hard drive, a folder called Easy Mosa, and within there I'm going to create another folder called Photos, and then click Create and Choose. I don't need there to be a subfolder, and just scrolling a little bit further down. The color space I'm gonna to change to Adobe RGB just in case I actually want to print the resulting mosaic out rather than just having it as a movie. And I'm gonna put a little tick in the checkbox here where it says limit file size two. And I'm gonna put in there 8,000K. Now the reason for that is that Easy Mosa have an eight megabyte file size limit. And that's for the small ones or the main image that you're gonna be using that you want the mosaic to be created from. So now that we've got that, let's just click on export. In the top left hand corner now, we can see the progress bar as Lightroom is exporting all 122 of the images that I'm now using. And in real time, you can see that's actually zipping along 
really, really quickly. Now, something else that we need to do is to choose a base or a main image that our mosaic is going to be kind of built upon. So over in my uh, Lightroom catalog here, open my 2019 folder, the folder called Alan Scott, and this is the one. Our dear friend, squadron leader, Alan Scott, who we sadly lost at the very beginning of the pandemic. So I'm going to export that one the same way. We'll go to the file menu. We'll choose export. And I'm going to change where this one's going to be saved. I don't want to be mixed in with all the small ones. So we'll just go down to the main Easy Mosa folder, click on choose. And again, scroll down to the color space, Adobe RGB, and making sure that the file size is limited to 8000K and then click export. Okay, so now that we've got all the images that we want exported out of Lightroom, now we can dive over into Easy Moza to get the mosaic put together. So over in my browser, I'm gonna to go to easymoza.com. And then at the top of the screen, we have three orange buttons, one, two, and three. We need to click on number one button first of all, and this is where we would upload our main base image. So I'm gonna click on my files and navigate to the folder where we have our main base image, which is this one here called Alan Scott, and we'll upload that one. Once that's uploaded, it tells you here the ratio, the number of cells, which is how the actual mosaic's gonna be made up. You can change that as well. There's lots of options within there that it's worth taking a look at. I'm gonna leave them at the default. This will also tell you the size that this will be able to be printed at, and some good and bad practice when it comes to making mosaics at the bottom. Well, once we have our main base image, we then click on button number two to select the small photos. And again, click on My Files, navigate to the folder, including all of them. We need to highlight all of those files and then just click on Upload. Now, you may have noticed just a few warnings popping up there as it was bringing those small files in. That's just to let you know that if you do encounter problems, it's because some of those images may be just a little bit too big but it looks like it's not gonna be a problem for the computer that I'm using, so it's letting me carry on. This now is where I can scroll through and very quickly make sure that the crop for each of these images is gonna be good for the mosaic. And you'll remember that there were images where there were people that were kind of off center. So here's a perfect example. This is where I've duplicated the one image. This one here, I know there's four people in. Three on the left are okay, but I'm gonna click on the bottom one here underneath and then I'm gonna move that crop over to include this lady here. And I'll just keep scrolling through, checking these images to make sure that the crop is gonna work for every single one of these pictures. Okay, so that's all of the images with the correct crop now. And the last thing I need to do is just come to the top, button number three, create mosaic and then just give it a few moments to process it. And there you go, there is your mosaic. Now you can play around with this preview that you get in here by using these buttons over on the right hand side, but you can also just zoom in using your scroll wheel on your mouse or your tablet to see all those images making up that particular mosaic. Now underneath we have the options where we can take it just a little bit further. We can share the image, we can download the mosaic. If I click on that, you actually are able to download a free low res version of it. So if I click on that, you can see it'll download it. And here is the download, a low resolution preview, but it obviously does have the watermark on it. There are other sizes that you can also download. There's a little bit of a payment involved in that one, but it isn't particularly expensive. There is also the option to order a video. Now you also get one for free, which is just basically zooming out from the already complete mosaic, but the one that I really like, and an example of which you saw at the very start of this video where the spit file was being made, is this one down here called Slow Build XXL. So there you go, that's Easy Moza. I just love the way it's so easy to make those mosaics, either as a picture or as a video. Now I guess there are lots of other alternative websites and bits of software out there that you can get that'll do a similar thing so if you do know of any please do let me know in the comment section below i do know of a great tutorial over on flurn with aaron nace as he's showing how you can you can kind of manipulate the contact sheet option in photoshop to create a mosaic as well it's a kind of different result and it's just to create a picture but it's a great tutorial i'll put a link to that in the description below but uh, that's pretty much it i hope this has been uh, interesting hope it's been useful if it has give us a thumbs up and as always 
If you haven't already, click on the subscribe button. It's just a great free way that you can support this channel. But for now, that's me. I'm done. I'll see you soon.